Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kairos and welcome back to Naval Action Rags to Riches. I apologize for the delay getting this episode out to you, um, but I have been fairly busy last few days so I decided to put it off for a week. Uh, but we're back on track now and uh, we managed to get the um, cutter back to Charlestown. And what I will show you just quickly before we get into it is um, just remind you when you have been sailing along for some time you will have fish in the hold like so and I recommend that when you do so you will get your fish here, you'll click on any one of these you'll right click convert all fish and then confirm it doesn't matter you know how many you've got you should have enough room uh, if you've got enough room in your hold there we are you've got now almost almost a hundred provisions all right so we've just turned all our fish into provisions now provisions um, you can sell at most ports for around 15 reales each, but don't do that. You want to hold on to these because these can go for two or three hundred reales per unit if you're uh, selling them on the um, on auction, as it were, if you were selling them to other players. So hold on to these for now. These can go into our warehouse in Charlestown. And now we have some provisions. They'll store up. We can have thousands and thousands of those, and uh, they will help our economy even if we choose not to use them for crafting. So now that that's out of the way, we need to think of what we're actually going to be doing for this particular episode. Um, and I'm going to stick to the basic theme of, you know, just doing missions to start with and getting our economy started up uh, as simply as possible, as safely as possible. So if we go to the missions here, we did the, um, we did the passenger missions last time and I'll show you how to do battle missions. So something important with the missions here. Before you do any fighting, you should come into ports, go to a couple of your ports, um, because these will all be different depending on what port you've got, and they will refresh every 24 hours. But you can come to these, and you can see what missions are going. So, if we go down to what we want is hunt missions, we want to be looking for one of these. Okay, so we need to kill 10, rank 6, for, um, and we'll get 550 doubloons out of that we'll also get a mission chest and a silver chest the mission chest isn't really worth that much to us the silver chest for starting out is actually going to be something really good to have and obviously the doubloons are good and this will sit there there's no time limit on this so this will sit there while we we hunt down ships practice our gunnery and we'll slowly be uh, going through these missions so we're going to take that mission there and not all of these missions are created equal some of them won't give you mission chests and you really got to look out for, for good ones. So that's one that you want to have. You want to have a hunt mission for rank 6. We should also have probably a hunt mission for... So this is for rank 7. That's not too bad. We could probably find one with less than that. So that's 15 kills. We could probably get 12 or 13. But we'll take that for now. And that's only a mission chest. There's no... We can always delete it later. So we might as well take it for now. Even though I'm not planning to sink a lot of 7th rates at the moment. So that's just a couple of missions that are on the go. You can also do these kill missions which will actually let you join a battle. It will create a, a cross on the map that you can go to and then there'll be a battle that you can fight. And the beauty of this is you will often get a mission chest or, a, or some doubloons or both. And um, depending on the rank you're using, you'll get more rewards. Uh, so the better ship you, you use, the higher the reward will be. And the beauty of these missions is that other players can't join them. Once you've started the battle, you'll be left alone. So, and no one will Loki in. In other words, you won't have AI being taken over by players mid-battle. Mid, um, so that's something to do if you're not confident in battle um, and you want to earn a bit of money on the side while you're doing that, you can you can actually do these missions and you've got a very good chance of, of taking out your enemy in a fair fight without having to worry about players coming in and ruining the day. So that's a good start, but we're going to actually go out now. We're going to get our Cerberus and we're going to see if we can hunt down a a few ships to add to our fleet. That's something I want to show you how to do. So we'll get the Cerberus and make sure she's stocked up. So you'll need, obviously, when you go out into, into battle, you'll need some provisions with you to keep your crew happy, to keep your ship repaired and up to scratch. So we've got already here from I presume last episode, that's right, I put I showed you how to do this before. We got rum, a hundred rum. 
We've got 12 hull repairs and 9 rig repairs. So that should be enough for us, for a ship this size, to keep ourselves uh, in, in the battle if we do get ourselves damaged. Uh, obviously, make sure you have your crew. Make sure you're fully crewed before you leave. And uh, also, you might want to just double check that you're actually using the right ship. And this here is where the upgrades are going to go. And here is the, the knowledge slots we're going to use. We're, we'll upgrade as we go along. And once we've found some books, we can actually improve our ship and kind of customize her a little bit more along the way. But for now, this is all fun. We just want to make sure that she's got cannons and that she is uh, loaded up with rum, hull repairs, and rig repairs. And we can head out onto the open world and do some shooting. I'll see you guys on the other side of the loading screen. Okay, scratch that. We're actually not going to leave port quite yet because there's a couple of things I need to show you guys before we go that I forgot. Um, first of all, we're going to take this search and destroy mission here. So we need to sink 10 Mercuries, which is a very specific type of ship. You'll learn what these are over time. But I'm just going to take that as well on the off chance that we do find a Mercury to sink. And a Rattlesnake Heavy... Oh, why not? We'll take it for now. You never know. We might find a Rattlesnake Heavy to sink. Um, we need to sink... 10 of those as well I think. Now the important thing is if we go to events and this is what I forgot to show you before um, sorry about the the dodgy formatting here but you know I, I can't be bothered re-recording the intro so just bear with me here. Uh, what we have is the patrol. We're not going to worry about the patrol for now. That's a PvP thing but for us getting started we'll have the weekly line ship, weekly light ships and weekly frigate. The two you Oh, worried about are going to be the weekly frigate and weekly light ships, particularly the weekly light ships. If we go here, what do we have? Okay, so it ends in three, uh, finishes in three days. We've got 10 kills left, and it's a challenge for rank seven. Okay, so basically, what this is, you can read this here, but if you accept this and you sink, and you're going out and you're sinking rank seven ships, okay, um, you are going to over time put yourself onto this leaderboard here, and if you get a high enough score, uh, you are actually going to have free doubloons, a reward of doubloons at the end of the week. And you can come and check this at the end of any week and you can claim your reward. So it's probably worth having that whenever you're out hunting for ships. So actually confirm that. Even though we're not planning to sink 7th rates so much, it's definitely worth having that. Okay, so now we're going to be gaining... Uh, as we gain experience, as we gain kills, we'll actually be putting ourselves on this leaderboard here and the same for the light uh, frigates if we're lucky we'll get fifth rates yes so if we sink other fifth rates let's say we find another Cerberus and we decide to take out another Cerberus well that'll put us on this leaderboard over time and if we sink 10 kills and we get a good score well we might get some some extra money at the end of the week it's not essential to be doing this but and I often forget but it is something particularly when you're starting out and you're trying to get uh, get as much bullion as possible, as it were, uh, you'll want to be doing these weekly missions, okay? So that's done. Let's actually leave now, shall we? We have found and tagged a um, Navy brig, which I'm going to show you how to attack. They fired their stern chasers at us. That wasn't particularly polite, but I suppose we did attack them. So I didn't record the actual tagging process, but I'm figuring you guys can work that out yourselves. The important thing to remember when you tag uh, a ship on the open world, when you attack uh, something, you want to be very careful about your positioning. So make sure you've got the wind in your favor and so on before you attack, because you will spawn in, in more or less in relation to where you are uh, actually on the open world, more or less. Um, it's not an exact science, but it does matter where you actually position yourself. So I'm going to actually stop talking now and set full sails, because we don't need to worry so much about them attacking our sails. AI will not deliberately use chain shot. Um, however, players certainly will. So, pro tip, if you ever see the AI starting to deliberately target your masts and rigging with chain, you know that the... Um, you know that you have been atta uh, attacked by a player in a Loki rune, with a Loki rune. What that basically means is they've got a, a little gadget that they've purchased or found. And if they use that rune, they will be randomly spawned into an AI and they will take over that ship 
um, themselves. So there's no warning about that. You won't know that that's happened to you until until it happens, and then you'll suddenly notice the AI will become a lot more skilled than it should be. Hopefully that won't happen in this particular mission. Um, so I'm not sure exactly why this ship is not is not turning around to attack me. I'm wondering whether, speaking of Loki runes, I'm wondering if someone's used one, because normally it would be trying to get into position to take us out. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly swing around, and I'm assuming that you've done the basic tutorial on sailing mechanics, so I'm not going to be explaining exactly how to sail um, in this series. I'm assuming that you've found better channels that show you how to do that. But I will show you this battle, probably in its entirety, more or less. Just so... Aimed a bit low there. Just so um, you can sort of watch and, and learn. That ship has gone and run aground. I don't know what they were thinking, but it has gone and run aground. So what we'll do is we'll just approach as best we can. Try not to sail any more into the wind. Um, this might be a little bit less exciting than I hoped it would be. Yeah, she's definitely run aground. She's gone and into the shallows. She's still using her stern chasers on us. But for some reason they decided to do a runner and head off into that inlet. And now they've gone and run aground. So they're going to be really easy pickings for us. And we could try and capture this ship if we wanted. Though I myself, I would rather not risk ending up in the same position they are. So what we're going to do is we're probably just going to sink this one. Um, just for the experience. And I'll show you how you can make money by sinking ships and just in the harbour of your home port. Oh! Okay, maybe we will have to move after all. Looks like she's sort of recovering. But... She might actually be able to pull herself off the reef. I think she is. I'm wondering if that's... Oh, that feels a bit suspicious. That feels a bit like someone's low keyed in. Okay, now we're into it. So we're getting hits now at a better range. Much better. So you can see there you have armor and you have um, up on the top right. You have armor and you have actual base health. We won't have to worry too much about being too maneuverable for this battle because we're attacking and now we're going to get kicked off the server in six, in uh, 30 minutes. So I apologize, this is probably not going to be the most entertaining episode of all time for you guys. But I'm a little tired. I have actually been fairly sick, so I will give myself some leeway here. Normally the AI is a bit smarter than this, but it's definitely not another player. We're going to out DPS her, so we don't need to worry about manoeuvring. But we do have to worry about running aground. That would be tragic. The gameplay is obviously more complex than I'm making it seem. It's not just point and shoot. Um, it simulates... Obviously, it simulates the wind. It simulates uh, realistic cannon fire pretty well. There's, just like any game... Um, of this nature, you'll have angle, as it were. You got so you'll get bouncing shots, bouncing off armor. If you have a heavily armored ship, think World of Tanks, and you've got the basic idea. Let's give her a volley. Good stuff. Boarding is the thing, and I will show you how to board at a later uh, later date. Uh, I'm hoping you guys will have worked that out long before I actually get to it. What we're interested in is just sinking this ship um, and actually t seeing what it's got inside. We could try and capture her, but I'm not particularly confident right now given my sort of current mood and the amount of time we've got left. I'm not sure it's worth risking a boarding action, particularly before we've actually got marines. Uh, you can 
find a book which will make you a better uh, a better border. Getting dangerously close to the land there, and I should be. A couple more volleys, and we should have her. And then, then I will show you how to raid, uh, how to loot the ship, and we'll get some experience out of it as well, and, and doubloons or um, reales. So this is more like the sort of range you want to be firing at medium guns at. This is about maybe a hundred yards. This is pretty much the effective range of medium guns. So, here, you'll also want to be aiming for their gun deck, because you can actually dislodge their cannon. So that's a, a bit of a pro tip, right? If you aim along their gun line there, we may get some, some hits. Some uh, critical hits, as it were. The dislodge guns, kill crew. And of course you can use chain, you can use, um, you can use grape shot, which will target the crew. And I'm actually not going to bother at all about, about maneuvering. You can see up in the left hand corner, we've e we haven't even lost our armor on that side. So we're okay, the hull is still good and they have stopped because they're pumping water. So they're sinking at this point. You can see we've riddled her with with cannonballs. I will probably cut this video uh, video to some degree because otherwise it's going to go way too long. But um, I think you guys get the basic idea. What I really want to show you now is not so much how to how to win battles because I'm really not doing a great job of this. Um, this is not my finest battle. Uh, I'm just trying to get this done quickly so I can actually show you what you'll be gaining from from actually sinking AI. Ouch, that hurt. Not the best, we can't get everything, but that'll do. So we aim low there. I was trying to get some waterline hits, but I aim just a little bit too low. If you hit the waterline, you will actually increase the leaking. Um, so it looks fairly um, simple. There we go, she's sunk. But there's actually quite a lot of complexity to this, to this game and to the battles. As you can see, we're actually going backwards because I've got the sails facing into the wind, which was deliberate on my part, so we didn't didn't move forward. So now we want to make sure we're stationary, or at least slow down. I think the fastest we can be is 3.5 knots, I think. Um, and then we click X, and this is the important bit. So here we have loot. Let's see what this ship was. It was a mahogany mahogany, so that actually wouldn't have been too bad a ship to actually have. That's a fairly okay build although it doesn't have it has a crew bonus but no actual bonuses so if we hadn't sunk this ship we could have actually transferred crew to it and we could have captured it but because we've sunk it it's already going down um everyone's jumping off ship and obviously we can't we can't take a sinking ship back home with us what we can do is take these upgrades we've got basic strong sails and we've got basic light rudder now that's actually pretty damn good that's actually a really good start we can just go ahead and put that on our Cerberus once we get home so we're going to do that and if the ship wasn't sinking and we decided not to take it we could just click sink other ship and and we could sink it we could even swap ships if we wanted to but that's something we're going to be doing later down the track so we have now got her hold we've pulled everything that we want from her hold to ours and we can now exit that and then just leave battle so you'll escape and here you want leave battle make sure you don't actually surrender by mistake <laughs> of course you won't be probably won't be leaving until until you're either running away or um or else you're you've actually won the battle so don't worry about that too much and now just bear with me while we load i apologize for my computer's slowness and here we are back in the open world so you can see there we got 11,000 reales and 127 experience. That's a surprise. Okay, so that's not bad. Now the wind's against us, so it's going to take a little bit of tacking back and forth to actually get back to the port. But once you do that, the next thing you want to do, these days, we don't have to worry about hull repairs because um, back in the old days, if we click here, you'd actually have to go back to a port to repair your ship, right? The condition and the sails would actually... You'd stay damaged. Any damage you receive in battle would, would be... Um, 
would still carry over to the open world. So you would have to be really careful about keeping your ship in good order and not leaving, not going too far away from friendly ports. But these days, once you leave a battle, your ship just goes back to to being whole again, which I don't like, to be honest. I think that's actually taken away from the game. That's one of the decisions the devs made that is not, in my opinion, a good one. But what you do have to worry about is your crew. So we've lost a couple of men in that fight, so we need to make sure we've got the crew, enough crew. So that's something you should do. Whenever you drop out of battle, make sure you have men, as it were, in, uh, in the uh, men resupplying, as it were, or restoring. What am I saying? I don't know. Put more men in your ship, basically. Make sure your crew is up to scratch. And here we are back in port. So, now that we have these upgrades, we can actually do something with them. And they're actually not, not too bad for this stage. They're not worth anything. No one is going to want to buy those upgrades because they're just basics. Where are they? But if we go to our hole here, we could just store them for later. Right, this is what you'll do. You'll, you'll probably store these up. Or you'll just sell them. You'll put them on auction, which is something I really should show you next episode, how to actually sell um, things to other players. Um, but this time, we're actually going to use these because this is something worth having. So this is how you put upgrades on your ship. So we've got basic strong sails, and that will increase our sail hit points by 10%, which is going to be useful if we get attacked by another player who tries to destroy our sails and rigging. So we're going to put that on. And now we have, you can see that went up, we have stronger sails. Okay. Now we could delete this, we could, t but we can't take this off. Okay. We cannot, now that it's on the ship, it's been installed into the ship and it cannot be taken off without destroying the upgrade. So the, and that means, of course, you'll lose the upgrade. So be careful what you put your upgrades on. And we also want this. What is What does this actually do? Rudder time. So basically, like rudder will basically increase the speed at which our rudder turns. So we'll very slightly increase our turning speed, basically. Um... So now we have a slightly better rudder on this ship and we have succeeded in putting a couple of upgrades onto our ship, getting a little bit of experience. And now if you hover over here, you see we've got 127 experience and we need 350 to open up a slot for our books. And then we'll be able to think about looking for some books to, to learn and then we can start to skill up our ship. So that is the basics of sort of combat. And I mean, we, we earned like 11,000 reales for that so if you prefer to do combat you can still make money from particularly if you attack ships of the same size or larger than you that was a ship that was of a less uh, a lesser class this is a fifth rate and we were attacking a sixth rate now if we attacked a, a ship that was the same size or bigger than us and we were able to win that battle we'd get a lot more money and a lot more xp okay so you can very easily if you like combat and if you're better at it than I clearly am. That was not my finest battle, I have to say. But I will um, clip out most of the embarrassing bits so I don't look quite so <laughs> terrible at this game. But uh, yeah, we're going to be concentrating mostly on trade, but I thought I should show you how you can make money and how you can find upgrades just by attacking AI. And that's going to be the, uh, the episode for this week. This has been Kairos. Thank you all very much for viewing. I'll see you next time.